I am Dooms Vince, and this is day 83 of Spawn Year. It took all day yesterday, but I drew 53 pictures of Spawn. Luckily, this pen never runs out of ink. I'm no Greg Capullo, but the first few turned out okay. But after a while, they degenerated into stick figures with triangles for eyes. I'm sick of Doom's Vents getting twisted ideas from this comic book. It seems like every test or attempt to get under my skin either parallels something from this book or he just directly rips it off. Doom's Vince acts like Spawn here is his villainous magnum opus, and all his material is so painfully derivative. But I'm still exhausted from all that drawing. My hand hurts, and this probably isn't the best time to offer up my criticisms of Doom's Vince's effectiveness as a supervillain. So on to today's review. Clown single-handedly orchestrates a fast and efficient plan that would have totally worked if he hadn't sabotaged it himself. He wants to frame Spawn for kidnapping. Pretty easy, just demonstrate a power you've never seemed to have before and impersonate Spawn while taking Cyan yourself. Simple. Now Spawn has all these special techno police all over him. Just one tiny problem. Clown doesn't kill Cyan right away. Not that I want her to die or anything. She's a cute two-year-old girl and McFarlane hasn't found some way for me to hate her yet. Uh, plus, we were both subjected to picture drawing torture, so I feel a bit of kinship toward her now. But wouldn't it make more sense to frame Spawn for murder and then just disappear? Spawn wouldn't be able to prove he didn't do it, and Terry would have the whole city after him forever, which seems like what Clown wanted, for whatever reason. His goals are as vague as ever. He just wants to complicate things for Spawn and complicate things for me, it seems, which somehow is supposed to further his endgame by proving to Bulgy that he should lead his army over Spawn. Once again, he enacts a strategy that almost does the exact opposite and helps Bulgy's goals over his own. Now, Bulgy wants Spawn to be his Grim Reaper. Seeing a couple of techno cops right on his doorstep makes Spawn trigger happy and he nearly mows them down. Luckily, Cagliostro happens to be there and suggests maybe finding out why they're there before he starts an all-out war between him and the police. I always like it when Cagliostro says, you've learned nothing. I'm starting to feel a bit of a kinship toward him, too. I won't complain again about Spawn's impulsiveness. Apparently, with all the evil his costume's feeding on, he doesn't have to use his brain or act like a real person anymore. Any stupid things Spawn says or does now can be explained away because his costume is influencing him and diluting his rationality. Although he seems in perfect control of said costume later when he saves Cyan and orders his cloak to hand her her stuffed toy to comfort her. Anyway, good thing Cog is his babysitter. What really bad baffles me about Clown's plans is that after making Cyan color all those pictures, keeping her malnourished, and finally letting her sleep for a while, then he tries to poison her. He complains constantly about putting up with her whining. Why did he have to do that if he was just going to kill her anyway? It's also awkward having a demon torment a two-year-old. Understandably, McFarlane didn't want to go too far with this and depict real torture on a toddler, especially because she's obviously based on his own daughter, but I think he should have avoided this scenario altogether or just not shown us what he was doing to Cyan at all. As Terry and Wanda are wondering in horror what's happening to their child, the urgency and suspense would be ramped up for the reader as we wondered too. As it is, Clown just calls her the B-word, I think, to make the situation seem edgier, compensating for McFarlane's unwillingness to show Clown hurting a little girl, and it doesn't work at all. After Spawn makes the wise decision not to shoot at the police, he goes to Terry and tells him he didn't kidnap Cyan. I like that Spawn is in the dark for a while about the kidnapping. The the world is collapsing around him, and he doesn't know why. Happily, it takes less than a page to convince Terry, and Spawn picks up a toy that belonged to Cyan, which he uses to track her aura. Ah, this aura business again. When did he learn to do that? It's not like Cygor taught him. Spawn's heard him say one word, Cygor, and he's been unconscious this whole time. 
Is this something everybody can do and I never got the memo? That would sure come in handy if my wife and I ever got separated while shopping at the mall. I could call her cell phone. Or I could follow her aura. So Spawn finds Clown, they engage in a gruesome, messy brawl. Anyone who happened by would probably think the city picked a weird place to dump its toxic waste. Spawn actually pulls off a relatively clever move, wrapping Clown in chains so tight he can't transform into Violator, and then shredding him to pieces. Call me crazy, but I don't think we've seen the last of him. Man, Cyan's gonna be in therapy for life. <laughs> me and her both. McFarlane uses this opportunity to clunkily drop an idea that comes totally out of left field. Spawn says, when I'm through with you, Wynn and Chapel are next. Chapel? Spawn, you haven't said a word about Chapel since Bobby came back from the dead. And I thought Chapel was dead. If he's not, don't you at least still think he's dead? How did you find... I guess he just says this so Clown can reveal Chapel wasn't Al's actual killer. Okay... Well, Chapel sure seemed pretty positive he was Al's killer. Great, just what the story needs, and even more convoluted origin. Next thing you know, we'll find out Cyan is Wynn's biological daughter, Terry is Twitch's half-brother, and Al was actually a spawn before he thought he was a spawn, and that's why he couldn't have children. At the end, Cyan is returned to her parents, and Wanda thanks God for it, not Spawn. What Wanda doesn't know is that God's just a little old lady who makes nonsensical prophecies involving her dead husband, designed to stretch comic book pages ad nauseum and never come to a logical or satisfying conclusion. I have a headache. Signed, Captain Logan.